So in this video, I'm going to cover the rest of the Spanish-American War legacies, parts two, three, and four, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and finally the legacy of the Maine. <clears throat> so uh, when we take a look at Cuba and the legacy of American imperialism in Cuba, um, remember the Teller Amendment before the Treaty of Paris <clears throat> with the Spanish, it said we need to guarantee Cuban independence. Um, and we kind of give the Cubans their independence, but um, we also have a lot of uh, expectations out of Cuba. Now, the United States did do some good things in Cuba. They're, um, they, they, we do build their infrastructure. Um, we do bring more modern medicine to the Cubans. And so their lifespan um, improves and they don't die of so many diseases. But there are some major problems uh, that that develop as well with American imperialism in Cuba. Um, when Cuba becomes a country, of course, as a new country, you have to um, form a written laws, and this is known as a constitution. So the Cubans start to work on a constitution. And one of the things the United States uh, does is say, okay, they pass the Platt Amendment, and you need to know what the Platt Amendment is. It basically says, Cuba, you can become independent, but in your constitution, you have to write into it that we can basically come in and you know, interfere in your affairs if you don't do what we like. And so the Platt Amendment, uh, in the Platt Amendment, the U.S. forces the new Cuban constitution to allow U.S. rights to intervene and also keep a military base in Cuba permanently called Guantanamo Bay. Um, it ends up being that Cuba is really a protectorate and the United States, there's a map on here, that kind of goes over how many times the United States actually goes into Cuba with troops to kind of um, settle disputes and, and basically force Cuba to do what we want it to do. And the negative impact of this is because the United States imperializes Cuba, because the United States basically doesn't fully grant it its independence and continues to meddle in the Cuban affairs, this is going to breed a lot of negativity in the Cuban people toward the United States. And this is going to, um, because it also leads to a lot of uh, a wealth gap and a lot of inequality, a lot of Cubans are eventually gonna start turning to a different idea about economics. And, and so they're gonna eventually turn to communism. And we've had to deal with the problem of Cuba becoming communist in the 1950s ever since. And so, definitely ends up being some negativity with how the United States handles Cuba. With regards to Puerto Rico, um, Puerto Rico is fully annexed. And, um, and so Puerto Rico really becomes a territory of the United States. In 1952, the United States grants Puerto Rico its um, commonwealth status, meaning Puerto Ricans are American citizens, although they do not get to vote for president, but they're American citizens. Um, yet they get to self-govern their own island. So Puerto Rico has its own government, um, and it can kind of operate independently of the United States. But the United States does help protect Puerto Rico um, as they are American citizens that actually do live there. Um, it, it could uh, Puerto Rico could vote for its own independence, or it could decide to vote for uh, to become a state. Um, but that's something the people have rejected three different times throughout the years. And so the status is still, they are a commonwealth. And the final part of the, your reading was about the legacy of the Maine. Remember this whole thing starts, um, first of all, by a lot of yellow journalism, uh, journalists stirring up um, American distaste or dislike of Spanish rule in Cuba. But the thing that sets everything off is that explosion that happens on the Maine. Later individuals, um, and by the way, there was an investigation right away, um, first by the Spanish who determined that this was an accident, but the Americans totally ignored their findings and went in and did their own findings and said, nope, it was a mine that exploded near the uh, mains hull, which caused the magazines to explode and, and destroyed the ship and killed all of those American soldiers. Well, it, um, some investigators or some people interested in the topic come back later in the 1970s and, and look at the pictures and, and do an investigation themselves and feel like there was, it was actually an accident. Historians today um, don't really know exactly what happened, 
the evidence could suggest that either possibility happened, that it could have been a targeted or it could have actually been an accident. Um, I probably would lean towards accident. I don't know why the Spanish would actually try to get involved in the war in the United States with the United States at that point, given how weak Spain was and how strong the United States was getting. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But anyway, um, so that wraps up the Spanish-American War legacies and this video.